Hi guys, welcome back and today I'm going to explain to you what the breeding cycle of sheep is all about. So to begin with, we're going to look at the reproduction within the ewe. First off, we have puberty. So this essentially means sexual maturity within the ewe. So the ewe needs to reach a certain age of sexual maturity. A rule of thumb is normally 9 to 12 months. However, she also needs to be able to reach 70% of her mature body weight before selecting her for breeding. However, puberty also is when a U exhibits estrus for the very first time in their life. The age of puberty within a sheep can be influenced by either genetics, so the breed for instance, uh, the size of the animal, uh, weight, and nutrition. High levels of feed pre-weaning and post-weaning can even influence the age that the animal reaches sexual maturity and exhibits estrus for the first time. So this essentially means that good feeding and good nutrition can lead to reducing the age or time it takes for an animal to reach puberty. By reaching puberty uh, and exhibiting estrus at an earlier stage, this allows for producers to use replacement use earlier and uh, enables them to increase the production within their flock. Next up, we'll look at the estrus cycle or the heat cycle. So this is essentially when a animal, female, would exhibit estrus or heat for the first time. In sheep, the estrus cycle uh, can range from 13 to 19 days, but it averages out at 17 days. The estrus cycle is mainly made up of four phases. So at first we have proestrus, then we have estrus, metestrus, and diatestrus. So estrus is essentially the time or period when a U is receptive for the ram and will stand to be mated. All right, so essentially when we look at the reproductive characteristics of a ewe, the age of puberty on average would be nine to 12 months. The length of estrus would, in days would be 17 days. The timing of the ovulation would be 20 to 30 hours after the start of estrus. And lastly, Gestation in days on average would range from 146 to 147 days. So when you take the reproduction capabilities of the ewe into account, the next thing to look at is joining. So joining is the actual joining of the ewes with the ram. So you would have a number of ewes that you are giving to the ram for mating. And during this time, he will service all the use and depending on the production cycle that, that you have would then essentially mean how long the ram is spending time with those use to ensure that he services all of the use. The breed of your ram and his reproduction capabilities will essentially determine uh, your joining ratios which essentially means how many use are you giving to that one ram and how much time is he allowed to join all of them. The more time you give to the ram to service the ewes, the higher conception rate you will have. After joining, we lead into gestation. So gestation as a whole is the entire length of the pregnancy before lambing. The length of gestation on average varies within sheep from 142 to 152 days, but the average is 147. However, there is differences in the length of uh, gestation periods depending on your breed. So for instance, early maturing breeds will have shorter pregnancies than compared to late maturing breeds. Gestation can be split into three categories, early gestation, mid gestation, and late gestation. However, many farmers just see it as early gestation and late gestation. Early gestation, meaning the first 15 weeks, of gestation and late gestation, meaning the last six weeks. The period of early gestation is very important because 
This is when fertilization occurs. So 21 to 30 days after fertilization, uh, embryotic implantation occurs. So any stress the animal uh, endures during these few days after um, mating or joining of the ram, a loss of the embryo can occur. Anything that can be done to reduce the chances of embryotic loss should be done and uh, this will then in turn increase the number of lambs that are born at the time of lambing. During uh, mid gestation any shearing, vaccinations, uh, handling of the animals or pronounced movement of the animals should be reduced at this time because this causes external stress and this stress can also lead to possible abortion. Nutrition during this time um, is quite simple. The ewe would only require a slightly increased ration to what a maintenance ration would be um, to stimulate uh, the rumen and also make sure that her uh, nutrient requirements are met so she can be healthy and give birth to a healthy lamb. Nutrition is important during mid gestation because um, the formation of the placenta takes place during this time. Late gestation is a very uh, critical period of the ewe's reproduction because during this time the most fetus uh, development and growth takes place. The reason why late gestation is so critical is because if the animal receives inadequate rations or feed um, it can lead to pregnant toxemia or even milk fever. So this is a very crucial time not to make any mistakes or sudden changes to the ration of the animal and just make sure that she receives good nutritional feed. So next up we have lambing. So lambing is essentially the ewe giving birth to her lamb. So there's essentially three stages within lambing. It's the dilation of the cervix, the expulsion of the fetus, and then thirdly, the expulsion of the placenta. The dilation of the cervix normally takes uh, anywhere from three to four hours. And um, the birth of the lamb normally occurs within an hour or less after the break of the first water bag. However, use that lamb for the first time may take a bit longer. So if labor takes over an hour for mature use or over two hours for you lambs that are giving birth for the first time, assistance may be required to help the ewe deliver her lamb. If labor takes over an hour for mature use and over two hours for uh, you lambs that are giving birth for the first time, uh, assistance may be required to help the ewe deliver her lambs. In the case of um, multiples, so for instance, if a ewe gives birth to twins, she would pass the placenta two to three hours later and there would be afterbirths for each of her lambs. So after the lambs have been born, the mother will nuzzle her lambs and lick them clean and thus beginning the bonding process with her lambs. And then it's very important to ensure that the lambs receive that first colostrum from the mother to boost and strengthen the lamb's immunity. Following uh, lambing, the ewe now finds herself in the lactation period. So um, the lactation period is also split up in two parts, um, namely uh, early and late lactation. And um, during this time is when she would provide and produce milk for her lambs. The first uh, part of lactation is very important because this is when the ewe is able to produce the best quality milk for her lambs and um, for the most part help them gain weight and meet their nutritional requirements as well. And essentially at the end of the lactation period you lead into weaning where the lambs are removed from the moms and are kept separate and provided creep feed or finishing rations to be sold to the market. All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful to you. And if it was, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.